There's really nothing better than a good bowl of ramen from a quality ramen shop. And once you've experienced one, you will certainly be hooked on ramen for life. But what if I told you that you can skip the ramen shop and make perfect ramen noodles in your very own kitchen? Sit back and get comfortable because over the next hour, we'll be unlocking all of the secrets to making amazing ramen noodles at home. degrees cooler in the other room I've got two things on the burner I got a the window is closed because they're chainsawing something down outside two cameras and it's like 95 degrees outside but we're gonna get through it and we're doing ramen today and not only are we doing ramen which is one of my favorite things in the world to make but we're doing it live and if you're new to this style of video it's gonna be different than the normal edited videos. I like doing this sort of live version from time to time because it really gives you guys a chance to see what it's like to actually cook. I, I don't get to edit out anything. And if you do have the patience to sit through a long video like this, I can guarantee you, you're gonna learn much more than if you were just you know, watching an edited video because you really get to see everything live and there's so much space to give you the pointers that you you really need like i love condensing videos but the truth is if you really want to learn how to cook one of the best ways are these long form videos so we're getting after it and if you've been following my instagram life by mike g you know i make a lot of ramen it's one of my favorite things in the world to make i put out a video recently if i could only make one thing for the rest of my life what would it be Yes, it would be some type of Asian noodle soup, but I just posted a, a picture of ramen the other day and you guys went crazy for it. A lot of people wanted to see the recipe. I don't know if it's just like, you know, the look of the ramen or what it is, but I'm making it today and I'm really gonna break down all of the elements. So there's plenty of time to chat. Let's get into the recipe and we are actually gonna start with half boiling eggs and there are a ton of different elements we're going to be making the broth we're going to be making some vegetables we're going to be making a flavored oil but one of my favorite components to you know any good ramen is a is a great half boiled egg so what i have here is water that is boiling it's not like insane right now it's just you know a nice boil uh, a little above a simmer let's see if you can just some good bubbles there. And I am going to take this tool, which I love, and I'm just gonna pop in these eggs. And these eggs are actually room temperature, so I suggest that you do that because what happens is when I pop these in there, and you can always just give them a little dunk like this, just dunk it in just like that. So you don't get any cracks because if they come right from the fridge and they go into boiling water hold on i'm just gonna set the timer for i'm gonna set it for six minutes i think these are gonna go for about five and a half minutes um, but if you take eggs straight from the fridge and you put them into your water you know cold into hot not a good thing that's an explosive um, possibility right there so they could crack so you just got to be gentle and you can always just you know, like temper them in, get them adjusted to the water, just like I did. So that's gonna cook for, yeah, five and a half minutes. And remember, an egg boils at 12 minutes. So a half boiled egg is uh, six minutes, of course, but these are smaller eggs, so I'm just gonna do around five and a half minutes. And the only other thing I really prepared was a ice bath right here. So those are ready to go in the ice bath to just cut off the actual cooking. Actually, there is one more thing I prepared. So what we're making today, I should probably have explained this, you know, straight up in the beginning of the video, but we're doing a miso based ramen. Okay, so there's a bunch of different styles of ramen. You have a soy based, you have a more milky based ramen. One of my favorites and one of the easiest that I've found to, um, you know, to really perfect at home is a miso based ramen because there's so much flavor in, you know, a miso paste that 
you're really you're really getting that extra help you need you don't have to create too many extra homemade flavors because a lot of it lies here so you know one other thing you need to know is i did prepare a stock okay this is a this is a chicken and there's actually a lamb bone in there so that is pre-made i made this last night if you want to learn how to make a stock like this click this video right here this is everything you need to know about making stocks and broths from home but the truth is any type of meat stock will work and honestly vegetarian stock will work great as well i did a whole video on vegetarian ramen that you can click right here that teaches you how to make a kombu broth so you could do this entire recipe and cancel out the meat stock and you can put in a kombu broth and it's still going to taste incredible with the miso and the uh, the flavored oil that we are going to make so again this is a chicken stock i just cooked it overnight um, for about i would say eight hours and i strained it off this morning i actually roasted the bones before i had some chicken neck um, some chicken feed. I roasted that just for a little extra flavor. And this is going to be key. This is completely plain, but this is going to be key to impart some really tasty and just meaty flavor. This helps so much with your broth. And, you know, you can do really good vegetarian ramen broths. And I've, I've done it before in this video, but the, the vegetarian video, but just a, a good solid meat stock will help so so much and my favorite to be honest is um is a pork stock but you know chicken will chicken will be fine but pork i find just really nails that uh that authentic ramen flavor they actually were out of pork bones i like pork neck bones for my ramen stock so i'm going with chicken and a little bit of lamb flavor in there so let's see, we've got our eggs boiling. There's, there's a lot of elements we're doing here today, so I gotta wrap my head around it. But um, I think the next thing would be, okay, we'll do, yes. The next thing would be the flavored oil. So we've got these scallions here. Check out these beauties. And we've got some ginger. So actually French Guy Cooking, one of my, my favorite cooking uh, YouTube stars, I don't, you call it? I don't, I don't know what you call it, personalities. He put out a video all about oils um, and how you know ramen is pretty much flavorless without oil. And it's so true when you really get into you know good authentic ramen, like when you make it at home, that's probably the element you're missing. That's what gives it this authentic flavor and just, it's like a flavor bomb. And he made a ton in this video. I'll link it down below. I'm just gonna do my favorite version. I think this is a, um, this is a Chinese technique, I believe. And it's really simple and I've been doing it for years and I absolutely love it. So, oh, okay, so that is, that means five minutes because it beeps one minute before. So I'm going to take those out very soon because I just don't like, I hate if I, I would rather have it a little under, I would say. If that thing doesn't, you know, come out runny, that's a big disappointment. But if it's like a little, you know, a little too runny and it's harder to peel, I would rather have that than the other way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over. This is my water bath right here. Just take these boys out and you can kind of just slowly just give them a nice little wiggle there. I would say, oh, see this even, this cracked. I'm not sure what happened, but we got a crackage right there. Okay, so that should be perfect. I'm gonna turn that off and I'm just gonna slowly dip those in again you're kind of tempering the temperatures there I guess that's what temper temperature is in tempering right I don't know so you're just gonna dip those in slowly let them come to temperature so they're not shocked too much and then that's gonna stop the cooking process and we're actually gonna use this water for oh you know what we'll do right now 
I did want to blanch the broccoli rob and just you know stick with me here I'm bouncing all over the place and that's gonna happen in this video because there's a lot of elements um, but just you know it, there's gonna be a reward in the end it's just gonna be a little wacky to get there so I've got some beautiful broccoli rob that I got at the market and you know when you are going to make a ramen this is the best part about making it at home is that you can do whatever you want that is the key to home cooking you are the boss you are in charge of your your kitchen so you can add whatever you want when it comes to veggies it's like you know whatever the hell you have in your fridge or what's fresh in the market there's no rules with this stuff there's no rules with cooking i mean you want to get it you know off you want to get a tasting good that's like that's a rule of course you want uh you want your your food tasting good but when it comes to like oh you can't have this and you know your ramen you can't have that don't matter there's there's no rules and actually ramen they say that's you know that's one of those japanese uh, dishes that doesn't really have too much like insane tradition like you gotta follow it exactly and i think that's why so many people are attracted to it because there's a lot of opportunity to to flex on it a little bit and that's what we're doing today we're flexing on this ramen so what i'm doing with the broccoli rob is just blanching that for two minutes and then i'm gonna repurpose this ice bath over here and pop that in and that will just be a really nice side veggie you know one one of the things i don't like about getting ramen in um in the stores and ramen shops and restaurants is sometimes there's there's not enough balance between veggies and like meat. Sometimes it's just an intense broth with noodles and like a little veggie and maybe an egg. I like adding a good amount of vegetables to my ramen. And the only opportunity I really get to do that is if I make it at home. So this is just, you know, blanching away. And I, I, you know, prefer to blanch a lot of my vegetables, but definitely those broccoli and broccoli robs and cabbage, you get such a great retention of flavor and just texture if you just give it, you know, a two minute little bath in some, some very hot water. So this is almost done. It's going to beep again. We'll get back to this oil. So we've got scallions. And we've got a little bit of ginger right here. So this is going to be a scallion ginger oil. I'm going to actually turn up this right here. Okay. This is pretty much ready. Because once this is done, then we're, we're in really good shape. So I'm going to take that. Actually, I'll bring this over here again. So you guys can see it and I'm just going to give it an old dump right in there and that can go in with the eggs. No problem because I can fish out those eggs easily. So again, we want to shock this and now we are free of this pan. It's tough. I'm trying to say as organized as possible because there, you know, I've said it many times, but there are so many elements going on. I wanted to really make this from scratch to show you, you know, how to make something that might feel overwhelming, completely homemade. And you'll be, you'll be cooking for your friends, your family, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whoever it is, no problemo. Making insane, authentic tasting ramen. Okay. So this is good. We've got our blanched broccoli rob that's cooling and then our eggs. We can now put that over here, put that aside. Back to the oil. So what I was saying was oil is really going to be that flavor bomb. And this Chinese technique that I learned is cutting up some scallions, cutting up some ginger. You can also add sesame. I like it just these two ingredients. They really nail just a beautiful flavor combination and what i have here is just some oil let's see how hot this oil is oh you know what now i can take it over to here see i am staying organized today look at that 
Okay. Got to get in a flow. That's like anything. Cooking, you just got to... You gotta feel that flow. Sometimes you start off a little rocky and then you know you hit your stride and boom, we're getting into it right now. So I've got some hot oil and I'm just gonna take a food processor. You could obviously cut it up by hand. That would be the authentic way to do an oil like this. And you know, I would definitely prefer that. Um, I find that the texture and just the, the flavor of all this stuff is a little better when you do it handmade but we don't have that time, the luxury of hand chopping right now. So I'm just gonna pop this all into a food processor and just give this a few pulses. You're not trying to, not trying to turn it into a paste, but you wanna chop it up. Let me just, Scrape down the sides, that's looking pretty good. I would say a little more and we are there. Yeah, so you don't wanna turn it into a paste again and I'm getting close to paste levels, but the ginger is chopped up and oh, oh, that onion is getting me in the eyeballs. So we're gonna take a bowl. Why don't we do it in a nice, Rex ball, I'll actually zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it. So here's the technique. I'm gonna turn this off. The oil's at about 350 degrees, so I've been heating it up on, you know, medium to low heat for, I would say 10 minutes. And we're gonna dump that out, okay. Dumpity dump. Let me just check. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this first. Oh, okay. That is plenty hot. Maybe, maybe too hot. Let's see. Cause I don't want, I don't want it to burn. Eh, all right. We're going for it folks. We are going for it. So I'm gonna dump this hot oil right over this ginger scallion mixture. And what happens here is just freaking incredible. Oh, okay. Hopefully this Pyrex can hold the heat. That's like the worst. Is there anything worse than dumping oil into like glass and it just shatters? I think this Pyrex is, yeah, okay. And then the rest of the oil, wow. Incredible, the smells here. So what that's doing is obviously infusing, cooking, um, and it's just a really cool technique. And I like it better than actually putting the scallions and ginger. I've seen that many times. You put the scallions and ginger in the oil, you slow cook it, all that. But I like this technique of um, just pouring it over and it already smells, oh, I'm getting eyeball blasted right now. Ah. Uh, the onions. See, live cooking, guys. This is, these are the uh, trials and tribulations. Okay, the smell. The smell is insane. It, it just smells like Chinese food instantly. And I know ramen is not Chinese, but you know, all of these countries are borrowing. Calm down. We got a little, just, I don't know what's happening. Oil splatter. All of these countries are borrowing techniques from each other. And you see these flavored oils that might have, I don't know, I'm guessing they started off. Really? What, what are you doing? All right. Calm down. Calm down. You see these flavors um, just merging into, e, you know, each other's dishes. And this just, this is one of those things, the first time I tried it, it, it was like the, you know, the, the sea, like I unlocked this hidden gem to Chinese food. These little techniques that you just would never, you would taste them in restaurants, you would never know how to recreate them at home. These are the techniques that really make something taste authentic, you know, whatever it is. Uh, chili oils, just like these little, little tricks they have to infuse flavors and really, 
you know, increase the, the taste of their dishes. So we're just gonna let that sit. You can package that up, um, but we won't do that now because that would be a little too messy, but you can keep that in the fridge and just, you know, let that hang out. You could strain it off. Um, you could definitely strain it off if you wanted to. Um, we're just gonna keep it like that and we will use that to really flavor bomb our, our ramen later on. Oh, I just remembered I have to get this going for noodles. So I just have to get a little water frying for noodles. I think I need three burners right now. Holy hell. Okay. So speaking of noodles, I guess we can, uh, we're going to chat about that right now. Let me just move this. All right, that burner. And then I'm going to have, okay, here's the question guys. You know what? Not going to do it. Not going to do it. This is always a bit of a, um, a game that I play in my head is like when it comes to flavor, when it comes to say vegetables, you know, I have the ability to stir fry that broccoli rabe I just, I just blanched. I could stir fry that in some oil and some garlic and just in increase the flavor. But I think the goal today is, and I think with a lot of ramens, is just make the best broth you can make. The perfect tasting flavor bomb broth and then add a lot of fresh ingredients to it. So we'll just add the blanched broccoli right to it because to be honest, let's taste this. Okay, good, I tasted it. A little chewy, not gonna lie. That, uh, that stem, I thought it'd be a little more tender and you never know Yeah, like I can't even chew through that, let me say because I might have to just cut it up properly so it's not so chewy. Okay, the upper parts are totally fine. Mm, see, wow. Just the flavor of blanched broccoli, Rob. That's fantastic, that's tender. Blanching is seriously just one of the most underrated techniques you can you can do in the kitchen it is it is one of the best ways to treat your vegetables and it, it just like <coughs> almost locks in the flavor i freaking love it all right that is good so next then let's work on let's work on our broth so i got this little pot here and I'm trying to think maybe i'll yeah this is gonna be more important to see. So I'm gonna slide this over to the close up. Okay, got this set up. There's actually one thing I did wanna do. This is a technique I learned recently that I absolutely love. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just take out, hold on, I'm gonna take out this broccoli rob and just squeeze that out. So that's, you know, done its thing in the water. It's cooled down. We don't need any of that extra water in there. So just squeeze that out and I'll just put that in a bowl to reserve for later. Beautiful. And then I'm gonna put this away again, staying organized, key to cooking. I'm not the best at it, but um, I'm doing my best guys. So we've got our eggs here, okay. These are half boiled. Here's a technique that I learned that I just love. It really helps with the actual peeling of your final product. So you take the egg and you just <clears throat> go around and give it a crack, very gentle crack. You don't wanna break the actual egg, <clears throat> just the outer shell. And then you dip them back into the water. And what happens is this is like one of the most difficult goddamn things is peeling your your eggs, uh, your half boiled eggs. It's a very delicate process and I've screwed up many eggs and I found that this process works so well. So when you dip them back into the water, since we've cracked this outer shell and we've really gone around it, 
can see like oh, we've cracked it all up on there just really cracked the whole thing the water gets under that membrane or under the shell and it just helps release the shell it creates like a little barrier it gets under there and it's just like a smooth release which um i don't know where i learned that tip but it's awesome sorry for i'll bleep that out sorry i never know like curse words this is tell me what you guys think you know curse words part of my life but at the same time young kids watching brothers green parents watching brothers green with their kids um so we get a lot of i can't say a curse word we get a lot of slack for uh is that the right word we get a lot of shit for saying curse words um and it's a tough balance because i want to be myself i want to be myself for you guys and yeah i do curse i don't think it's a bad thing but i also get it when it comes to you know, raising kids and having kids watching content that has curse words in there. So I don't know, maybe comment in, let me know what you, what you think. So we're going to let that sit. And I think if you just let that sit for like 10 minutes, by the time, you know, 20 minutes, by the time everything's coming together, um, those should be really easy to peel for our final product. All right, so let's think for a second here. We've got this on. Okay, so we're going to start on our broth and you know this is again there's multiple ways to make ramen broth there's no perfect way to do it there's i mean there's freaking millions of ways all right so just remember what we're trying to do is build a broth that is super flavorful i'm going to use some techniques that i've seen that i love to make a miso based broth that is super tasty. So at this point, feel free to follow this technique. You might love it, try it out. You can do a soy based, you can do a milk based, you can do a veggie based broth, whatever you want, all right? So a key to ramen, and I, I didn't learn this till recently. I was actually watching a chef's table on Ivan Robin, who lived in Japan. He opened a uh, ramen shop. And then he came over to um, the U.S. and he's opened one in New York. But uh, he was talking about how fat is like, you know, without fat, you don't have ramen. And I get it. Like, that, that's another great part about making ramen at home. Sometimes when you go out and you get ramen in a ramen shop, it can be a bit heavy. Sometimes they really push the fat element too much and it's intense. It's so much fat. It's like thick and it coats your mouth and I get it that's a big part of making ramen but you I like being able to control it like I've learned the importance of having fat in there if you want that authentic flavor that texture that mouthfeel but at the same time I like a little balance so I actually have some fat here this is chicken fat so I think I got this fat from uh, cooking down chicken skins yeah that's exactly i just i butchered a chicken which i like to do and then i you know took off all the skin cooked down the the chicken skin got a bunch of fat ate ate the crispy chicken skin right i, I always just eat that right away because it's too good and then you know made stock so what the moral of the story is get your own chicken butcher it up and you'll have a lot of elements for this ramen so i'm gonna pour in some of you know, and that's a little too high of a heat. I'm going to pour in this fat. And, you know, you also don't have to use fat. Of course, you can use, looks like there's a little water in here. Jeez. All right. All right, I'm just going to turn this off because it's not, it's not having fun right now. My skin is not having fun. It's getting burned off. Um, I've got two forms of miso right here. This is an intense two year age. Look how dark that is. The darker it is usually means the longer it's aged. This is brown rice aged for two years. I'm gonna do a big scoop of that right in there. And then I also have, this was from my, my friend um, who is Korean and um, yes, her mom, or no, her grandmother makes 
uh, soybean, fermented soybean paste from scratch. Um, so I'm gonna use some of that. Use any miso you like. I love how, I've just been exploring more with different variations of misos. There's lighter misos, there's sweet misos, there's different grains of miso. You can do barley miso, brown rice, white rice. So many options. So what Ivan Raman did that I love is he took this miso, okay, and he cooked it off in the actual fat. He cooked it down and I've never seen that technique and I've been using it ever since and it's incredible. The results are great. It's kind of like when you cook down a curry paste in, um, in Thai cooking which again, it really just helps cook out some of the flavors. You know, obviously you're gonna lose um, a lot of the, the health properties, but we're gonna, take, we're gonna take the hit on that to get some insane flavor of the sort of caramelized miso. I'm also gonna take a little bit of, let's see. I'm gonna take just a tiny bit of sugar at this point. You know, and I normally don't do this, but I like a little sweetness in my ramen. So just a sprinkle, maybe a teaspoon um, to kind of cook down and caramelize with all of those flavors. And you know, that can't hurt if you like a tiny bit of sweetness to balance out that saltiness, all right? And we're just kind of cooking that down. Hopefully you can see that. You know, and I haven't used this ramen paste. Um, it's super dark, so we'll see what the final product looks like. Uh, but it smells amazing. I like those long aged misos because they have so much goddamn flavor. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I'm an idiot. I'm like, this isn't doing much. Well, I turned down the, I turned off the, the actual flame because it was burning me. Okay, next up, I'm just going to chop up some mushrooms. I got an assortment at the farmer's market yesterday. We've got some shiitakes, shiitakes, and we've got some just cremini um, mushroom. When it comes to, you know, Asian noodle soups, come on. I mean, it, it really doesn't get better than a mushroom. It just adds a meatiness. And, you know, we're not actually adding any meat to this ramen, which is a little unusual. Um, wait, I lied. We are adding meat. We definitely are. And I just remembered what I have to do. But again, I've got so many things to do. I'm all over the place. Okay, so that is cooking down. So now what we'll do is we'll take this broth right here just plain, there's not even salt in here, and we'll just whisk that in. And I think I'll do all of it. Yeah, why not? I like making a little more, so I can obviously just have incredible ramen. Yeah, that's pretty dark, um, but I don't hate it. I don't hate it, that's a, that's a beautiful brown amber color right there and so the only salt at all right now is from the miso so i'm interested to just taste it to see where we're at by the way when you cook it down too i find that it incorporates into the broth a lot better as well oh yeah doesn't need any extra soy any salt that is spot on it will only get a little more intense of course but what we're gonna do is, first I'm gonna heat this up because I wanted to add another element that I'll talk about in a second. I'm gonna take these mushrooms, you can see them over here, and I'm going to slice them up and throw them right in here raw, which I really like. I like, I've been doing that a lot. Rather than cooking down the mushroom beforehand, just take your mushroom Throw it right into your, you know, your soup, your stew, um, raw like this, and let it cook. Mushrooms don't take too long to cook, and when you throw them in raw, 
you're imparting so much extra meaty flavor, so much mushroom and umami flavor in there. Um, and I love it. I love it. So we'll let that cook. I don't know until everything is kind of done. And I think that is other than putting in the oil, which I haven't decided when we're going to put that in. That will be it for the actual broth. And as far as how many mushrooms, you know, choose your own destiny there. Maybe one more. Let's see. Comment below if you like these types of videos. I've done um, a lot of, I used to have a 15 minute dinner series where I would do these live videos in 15 minutes. This is certainly not 15 minutes because there's a lot more to it. But I would love to hear your feedback on if you like the long format. Actually, Josh, like, Josh invented the live cooking format on YouTube. And I, I can say that with confidence that he invented it because he put out a video and I thought he was crazy, to be honest. Like, you're going to put out a 45 minute video of just you cooking on YouTube uh, on a platform where everything's got to be so goddamn quick. He did it. And people really responded, just kind of hanging out, um, you know, really learning, seeing the mistakes, seeing just the live feel of cooking. Like you see what's happening, it's madness. I could cut all of this out, but it's just nice to show you um, what really goes on in the kitchen. So I think, ow, watch that. I think um, I'm happy with that amount of mushrooms. Um, let's see, let's see. We can put the miso paste back. Trying to stay organized. Okay, here's the element I wanted to add. So where are you? There you are. I'm trying to think if we take this off. Switcheroonie. Yeah, we can pull a switcheroonie real quick. Let's see if I can pull this off. I want to burn this. Switcheroonie. Yeah. What did I call that? Putting the, the soup on the back burner. All right. So we have our cast iron here. What I'm going to do is take a... Ooh. Live cooking, my friends. This just happened in the moment. Okay. So... I have chicken right here. You see that? And this was the chicken from um, the actual stock. It was a lot of chicken necks. Um, that pretty much made, made up most of this meat, but I got a lot of meat on from the stock and never throw this stuff away. This is incredible right here, especially for soups and stews. You can throw that in, no problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take think about this. I don't want too much. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of just plain oil. All right. And I'm going to fry up some of this chicken. All right. Cause I just want to get like a little crispy topping. You could put that in raw, no problem. But this stuff, like when you fry it up, just your sort of scraps from your, your stocks, it gets so crispy and so so delicious. So I'm going to fry that up and then I'm going to flavor bomb it with this oil. And a lot of times if you see Chinese cooking, they're using it for chicken, for noodles, not just like in, um, you know, soups. So this is probably more traditional the way I'm cooking with it now. And I just thought about it in the moment, which is always exciting and why cooking is the most beautiful art form not the most beautiful but it is an art form and it's why i love cooking because you're just flowing you're freestyling and you're making food come on nothing better than that all right our water is our water's boiling so i'm just going to turn that down and again we'll get our soup just kind of rocking away um We'll clean up a little bit here. 
I'm trying to think. I'm doing pretty good. I can peel my eggs um, while I cook this down. So let's just turn this. You just want a nice medium heat. And there's a little bit of fat in there, so you're gonna render some of that out. Um, there's, there's a tiny bit of skin, it looks like. And over time, you know, over like five, seven, 10 minutes, that's gonna get crispy. And then I think I will add, once I'm feeling good about that, then I'll add some of the actual, I'll probably strain out just some of this scallion and ginger mixture um, because I don't need any of the oil and just add that in for, oh, maybe some sesame seeds because you know Mikey loves the scallywag and sesame combo. Um, and that is gonna be incredible. So feeling pretty good about this. This is coming together. Let's talk about the, um, the ramen noodles right now. Uh, so got my ramen, boom. That's actually not a great view. It's a better view. These I got at my local grocery store and you're seeing more authentic ramen pop up, um, you know, at different stores. Whole Foods now carries Sun Noodles. Sun Noodles is a company around here that produces pretty much all the ramen noodles for the best New York um, ramen joints. And pretty much they're so great at producing ramen noodles. They do custom blends that most of the ramen shops are like, I'm not, you know, I'm not going through the hassle of making them homemade. Um, so Sun Noodles is actually like that New York taste of ramen. I find that it has a very specific taste. I've never tried these. Um, they, you know, these are actual ramen noodles that were frozen. Um, and I would say one portion for, yeah, one portion's about, I mean, that's a lot for one person. I wouldn't say it's a lot. It depends on how hungry you are, but that's probably one person. But you could, you could get. I've gotten away with one portion for two on like a lighter ramen. So, you know, ramen noodles are just wheat noodles um, that are have a high alkalinity, um, which gives them that extra chew. You could do it with spaghetti. Or, you know, it wouldn't be the best. You could do it with other different styles of Asian uh, noodles. A lot of times, to be honest here, um, a lot of times I use rice noodles because, you know, ramen to me, I think is one of the best broths um, when you can really master some of the techniques. But eating, you know, wheat noodles like that um, and so much of it is very heavy. Um, sometimes when I leave a ramen shop, I'm like, hey, and it's too much. Um, so I do like uh, replacing some of the wheat noodles with rice noodles. Um, but we're gonna do the authentic ramen noodles today. Right, we are cooking. Oh, that is, all right. So that ramen broth was a little too high. I think at this point I can, um, it's just boiling away. I'm gonna taste it. I really love the, the actual color of this. Oh, that is amazing. I'm telling you just the, the fat cooked with the miso. I haven't even added the actual oil. And this is something I've been thinking about. I wanna add the oil just for that extra flavor bomb, but it's like, do I, do I add it to the top? or do I add it in now? And in the past I've added it in now um, and just let all those flavors kind of meld together. But I have seen a lot of times they just add it in at the end. Um, they might drizzle it on the top or um, you know, put it at the bottom of the bowl. Okay, we're getting crispy. So there's two things. I did want to cut up. You know what, I'll just use the end of these, um, these scallions. I don't have to do anything fancy with the scallions, just a nice little slice, just for a little fresh kick on top. Scallions are one of my favorite topping, fresh scallions right on top of your ramen. A lot of times I cut them up thin, you see me do that in videos. I cut the scallions up like super thin. Um, I think I learned that from Ivan Ramen as well, and I let them soak in ice water, um, which is a great way to sort of take out the bite and just 
keep there. It retains the, the freshness of the scallion, but we don't have to do anything fancy here. We'll just do plain old scallion bottoms. Okay, and then we do need to peel these eggs, and I think that will be a good little task why, while I cook this down, but that's getting there for sure. That is getting crispy. I gotta taste that. No salt, so it doesn't taste like much. And that's the thing, most of the flavor is cooked out of this, um, of this chicken because it's in the stock. That's what happens when you make a stock or a broth. A lot of the flavors cooked out of the actual meat, the goal. But it doesn't mean that there's, you know, there's so much incredible texture that can be, uh, that can be obtained through cooking it down like this. And then you add a little extra flavor like from the ginger and scallion oil and you're in business. You've got something just incredible to top your ramen. Okay, so let's see how this worked. So the key with peeling these eggs is that you've got, you've got the, let's see if I can show you. Okay, yeah. You've got the uh, shell and then you've got this little membrane. And yeah, see if you get under that membrane, there you go, it's just peeling. How do I show you this? It's peeling right off, no problem. Um, you can kind of see that. It'll be easier with one of the brown eggs to see because the white on brown. Boom, look at that, come on. All right, that might've been the quickest half boiled egg I have ever peeled in my life. Let's see how this one works. You can see with the brown now, this should happen. Okay, so it's much harder right now because I'm not under that membrane right here. This still, there's like a membrane. I gotta kinda like poke at that without getting through the egg and just get under that, there you go. Once you get that membrane uncovered, then it all should just peel. Look at that, come on guys. That technique just worked like a charm. That's a game changer, because I love half boiled eggs, but they can be a pretty big bitch to peel. Oh, this one's actually giving me, I'm, I'm being a little too cocky here. Oh yeah, way too cocky, let's see. All right, I lost a little bit of egg. <laughs> not my best attempt, but not bad to say the least. All right, last one. Give this the mix. All right, that's that's ready for a little bit of the goods. I am so pumped for this. Just pile that right in there. And see what happens. The smell already. Wow. I have to taste this. And I think if I just let it cook a little more, let even the ginger and the scallion sort of caramelize a bit, we'll have something pretty special. Let's see. You know, I'm pretty surprised, like, I did a good amount of prep work here, um, but I'm surprised how organized and uh, clean things are. Decently clean. Oh my God. Oh my. Oh my hot hell, that is, oh my god, that is so good. <laughs> Just thinking of this, uh, you ever watch Bob Menery? Bob Menery is this great Instagram commentator, comedian, but he posted this one video. This guy gets hit by a golf club by like his son and he's like, uh, me to tears. <laughs> That's how I feel when uh, I eat this chicken me to tears. Okay. Um, let me try it one more time. Oh. That flavor is on another level. I'll just give that the last minute while I peel this egg. This one is flying off the shell. Wow. Look at that, guys. 
Look at that. No freaking problem. Try that technique. These feel a little, these small ones feel a little firmer. Um, not sure what's going on on the inside of that, but we'll see. Okay, keep those eggs just soaked for now. And what are we, what do we have left? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I think, I think we're good. So what we're going to do is we're going to boil the ramen noodles. We'll bring that over. Yes. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to set up real quick for the final presentation. We're back and we're going to plate it. And I think what I'm going to do is um, plate one at a time. So I have some beauties, beauties meaning like close up food shots. So I'm going to do one here live and then I'm going to save some to do another plating because I got to take a pretty thumbnail. So you guys will click on the video. This is how YouTube works. I got to I got to make things look nice as well. So I think um, I'm just going to chop this broccoli rob up. Remember, this is just actually, you know, first let's get the newt skis in because I got a two minute timer to kind of do everything else. So those look beautiful. These are super fresh, so they won't take longer than two minutes. And that is key with ramen noodles is keeping them nice and chewy. Um, that's just like, that's part of the experience. So you don't want to overcook them. So I'm just going to take some of this, chop off some of those heads. Um, and then you can take like the stem and sort of cut that on an angle just for some of those pieces. Let's try it. So good. All right. That will be plenty. These are looking good. Oh, cooking fast, cooking fast. All right. Then the next element would be Jesus, Jesus. I've got these amazing ramen bowls. I forget the guy's name who made them for me, but these are custom in there. I couldn't be happy. This is like the most perfect ramen bowl ever. I suggest trying to find some type of ceramic bowl or just some type of bowl with this shape. It's going to make your your experience feel like you're in a ramen shop. Um, okay, that's one minute down. So I'm just gonna take some broth with some mushrooms and pop that right in there. This is looking incredible. I tried it and it is very tasty. Okay, that's what that looks like. All right, and then I have to Drizzle in a little bit of oil, of course. This is some of my scallion ginger oil. Oh, wow. I like it actually drizzled on top because you get to see, like you see something's going on and then you get those little flavor bomb oil droplets. Drizzled some of that. All right. How are these? You can taste your, let me turn this down can taste your noodles. <sighs> yep. Those are cooked. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Okay. Yeah, why don't I take these out and place them right on. This is my friendly little scooper. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ramen noodles. Oh, wow. And then I can just place a little bit of this, you know, some of the green, some of the green right in there. Okay. A little bit of, a little more green. All right. And then we have some of the meat. You can obviously just sprinkle that over there then you cannot forget the egg. The exciting moment of how this egg came out. All right, a little, not as runny as I'd like because it's a little smaller, but still looking great. Um, are there any other elements other than the scallions? I'm like trying to think. 
some fresh scallions on top. And one thing I actually do like to, wow, that is a beautiful bowl of ramen. You know, it's, all, it's always about impressing yourself, trying to take it to the next level. One thing I like doing is, let me just zoom in on that. Sprinkle in a little bit of this um, sort of sesame. It's uh, what's it called? Green nori seaweed, fura furakake. It's just like uh, some toasted sesame seeds, a little bit of seaweed, a little extra flavor bomb. Come on, that is just fantastic right there. All right, you know what? I might as well try that, and then I will be able to, of course, make it again. Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. All right, got my beauty shots, and it's time to taste. This is the mukbang section, which basically means I eat in front of you guys and tell you how it is. But this thing came out definitely better than I expected. The sort of variation that I created here, a little unique. I would say I've never quite had a ramen like this one, which again, that's, that's why we're doing this. We're freestyling, we're experimenting, we're having fun in the kitchen. But this just looks insane. A nice miso creamy broth right there. I tried one of the noodles and they are really great ramen noodles. So let's say. Uh... Mm. Sorry for the slurs, but that's this is the only time when it's actually appropriate to be obnoxiously slurping noodles. Mm. Wow. Broth is perfect. Definitely suggest always upping the flavor, the salt a little bit on your broth, especially if you have some of the other vegetables that are a little bit plain. Just really focus on intensifying that, that broth flavor. Mm. And my favorite thing about ramen is the experience of just mixing everything. I think it's so cool that, you know, you have an entire meal in one dish right here. And you're not used to, I'm, I'm growing up, I was not used to this. Like if I served my parents a bowl of noodles, they'd be like, oh, where's the side dishes? Where's the, the greens and the grains? It's everything you need is right here. And not only that, you're getting multiple courses in one sitting because I find that really good ramen, something going right here, yeah, really good ramen changes throughout the experience. It shifts, uh, you know, the textures and the flavors, they, they're constantly changing as you get down into your bowl. So that's why you look at this thing and you're like, well, that's a lot of noodles, but you know, this is a whole dish that is just ever changing. Mm. The reason you cook the egg half boiled, because when you mix it in, you get another layer of creaminess, of flavor, of emulsion into your soup, and it just makes it that much richer. Wow. Just the broth. Oh my goodness, that is incredible. That is just authentic tasting. Like you, you get this at a ramen shop, I am happy. Honestly, it's hard to get something like this. You gotta go to a really good ramen shop, you can make this at home. And there's actually one other, whoa, element that, ugh, lost the sandal. Sometimes I've seen they, they offer like a chili paste or like a garlic chili paste that you can add in. And sometimes I'll add this right into the broth when I'm making it. But I do like adding a little bit of that in. Maybe you do it halfway through. Um, so your broth completely shifts flavor. Now you have a bit of a spicy broth and then you've got two broth experiences. One of the best I've ever made excited that we shared this experience together. I hope you maybe made it through the video. You probably learned a good amount if you if you did make it through. A lot of tips in there, a lot of good knowledge when it comes to just making 
you know, ramen, Asian noodle soup, just different techniques that you can use for, you know, other dishes as well. It doesn't have to be ramen. Remember to follow Life by Mike G. I'm posting this type of stuff all the time, inspirational cooking content so you guys can get in the kitchen and cook more for yourself. The reason I started making ramen at home was because I like to, you know, I like to take control of my life and not have to go out to the restaurants every time I want something like this. Like this to me is ramen shop quality. I worked on it over time and now I can produce this for my friends, my family. Like I make this for myself and my wife, you know, all the time. And that's a Friday night date, right? Oop. Sorry, that is a Friday night date right there. And she's happy, I'm happy, which is always important. So hopefully you make this stuff and tag me at Life by Mike G so I can see your creations. Get cooking.